So if you want to get better FPS on Warzone 2, then follow along with some of the Windows settings and also the in-game settings that I'm going to look at later in this video. It's going to be relatively basic, not too complicated. Anyone and everyone could follow along. If you're looking for super in-depth and experimental window settings though, I'd recommend checking out someone else, maybe another creator, and some of the other videos that are out there, just because I prefer the simple and effective changes. I don't want to mess about with too much, don't want to make it too complicated, so I'm just going to share the basic stuff with you today. The window settings are going to be also applied for like a lot of other games as well, so it won't just boost performance for uh, Warzone, but it'll also do it for a lot of other games like Valorant, you know, Overwatch, anything. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to run through those now and then we'll go into the in-game ones later on. Like with all my other game optimizations, I have a set rotation of things I like to change and go through and the first one I'm going to take a look at is the graphics setting. Remember that all these are going to apply to all your games that you play, so keep that in mind just in case you change anything you don't want to change. Um, anyway, let's start with the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, which is the main setting on the graphics tab we're going to take a look at. I have it off, simply put, I have it off because I found it doesn't work very well for me. This doesn't say mean to say it doesn't work for you though. Some people do have success by turning it on. Me personally, when I turned it on for Battle Royale games, I saw a lot of hitching and stuttering. Once test yourself, find out if it works for you. If it doesn't, keep it off. If you don't want to take the risk, keep it off anyway, whatever. Um, also on this tab, there are other ones as well. Variable refresh rate, you can ignore and turn off. And the graphics performance preference, I don't know how much it actually changes, but what you can do is you can go through and find the games. So this year's game is called Call of Duty, so it'll be the Call of Duty launcher. You go in, you browse, you find it, and you click high performance tab on that, and basically just sets it to run in high performance. Although I don't really know how much this changes on an actual desktop PC or like even a higher end PC, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, let's move on. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of a controversial one, but also I think most people probably already have this on by default, uh, is the game mode. In past videos and past optimizations for other games before, I've had this off actually, but now I've turned it on and I've used it in most games now and I think it feels okay. I've not noticed any issues. Maybe test it yourself, but I've, I think it's okay to keep it on. Moving on quickly now, just like a basic sort of housekeeping type thing, open up your task manager, make sure that all your startup apps are like disabled, any that you don't use daily. So for me, for example, I have sort of things to do with my uh, peripherals, like my mouse, my keyboard, my headset, things like that enabled. I've got wallpaper engine enabled for startup. Uh, Gaiazo, I use that pretty much daily. DS4 Windows for controllers, I use that pretty much daily. Keep everything that you use daily on enabled and anything that you don't think you're gonna use that day, or you know, if you don't typically use, keep disabled and it'll just save up a little bit of that free room on your memory. Uh, and if we go take a quick look at our apps now, you'll see I'm using 32% and I'm pretty much just basic, not using anything. I have OBS open and that is all that I'm really using right now. So make sure you close everything you have in start, make sure it's all disabled. And if you have any tasks running, obviously make sure you disable them as well, because it's really important for a battle rail game like it was in two. Now, the last thing we're going to go through on Windows is the NVIDIA control panel. If you're on AMD, you have similar options, I believe, yourself, but I don't have an AMD system with me right now, so I can't tell you those. But what I can do is for NVIDIA users, I can run through some of the 3D settings I'm using and also the color settings that I've been using as well. So first things first, let's go take a look at the 3D settings. I'll scroll through quickly and you can see which ones you want to use. And I'll mention any that are really important. So as we scroll through, you pretty, see pretty much everything is off for application controlled, blah, blah, blah. You can control it yourself. You see I've got G-Sync enabled. I like to use G-Sync. I have started using it a lot more in games, uh, even though I like to play competitive ones. But, you know, the input delay is not really a thing anymore. Uh, scrolling down still, we have uh, preferred maximum performance. This is really important for power management mode. Absolutely want that in preferred maximum performance. Make sure your refresh rate is on the highest available, although I imagine a lot of you probably already have that done anyway. Some of these texture filtering settings are ones that I've just run and tried myself. Mainly when I played DayZ, you could do a lot of the tricks there and the texture filtering was really important for that. And yeah, pretty much just keep everything on high performance, maximum performance, things like that. Make sure power management mode is set and that should be good to go for 3D settings. However, next thing we have is make sure your resolution, everything else is set to what you are on. Make sure that your desktop color settings are as follows. I use digital vibrance at 80%. Anywhere from 80 to 100 is pretty much like the maxed out that you want to use really in terms of color accuracy, but also just for your eyes. You don't want the game too vibrant, too bright or anything like that. It can mess up your eyes a little bit, especially if you play quite close. Um, so I have it on 80, sort of on the limit, quite nice. And I use that for all three of my monitors I have it myself, just to keep the color accuracy as close as I can across them all. And like I said, I run G-Sync as well. So let's move on to the in-game settings, talk a bit more about them and yeah. The first thing I want to say about the in-game settings is if you know something called the players folder or if you've heard of the players folder before, then this is quickly a note for you. I am not going to show you the settings that I use for that now, purely because it changes for everyone and everyone has their own independent settings that work best. Nobody actually knows what works perfect as a universal scale. One thing I would recommend is if you do know what the players folders is, set your video memory scale to somewhere between 0.8 to 1.2 and also set your core, you know, the halving the core count, whatever people say to do, set it to half and move it up one by one by one. 
So if you have eight cores, set it to four and then try five, try six, try seven, and then try eight and just see which one you think works best. For me, I found that the lower ends seem to work better. So around five or six worked quite well for me. If it's all jumbo, mumbo jumbo to you and you don't know what this is, it's okay, don't worry about it. But the players folder, if you do know what it is, try what I've just said and uh, yeah, let me know how you get on in the comments. Now, anyway, to the in-game settings, pretty basic. I think for the first tab, we're gonna go through and display. I'm pretty sure most of you will know roughly what all these do. Uh, make sure you're playing on actual full screen, not full screen borderless. Make sure you've got it on the right monitor. Um, make sure your refresh rate is set to your actual refresh rate of your monitor. Uh, aspect ratio, all that stuff. This is all basic, I'm pretty sure. You, uh, custom frame rate limit is probably the only thing where it's a little bit different. So set your custom frame rate limit to custom, change the max to 300. To keep your menus on like 90 to 120, do not need to go any higher than that. It just wastes GPU power. Um, so yeah, but don't run it on unlimited. There's been some issues with uh, memory leaks and things like that before on unlimited. Um, all this is basic stuff, basic stuff, everything off, HDR, happy brightness on whatever you want. Uh, but this is the main tab where things start to change for FPS. Anyway, moving on to the quality tab, which is the most important one. I run Fidelity FX CAS. I know some people like to use an image scaling or FSR a little bit. FX CAS for me, and I run it on 50. 50 to 80 is about the sweet spot, I think, for sharpness, and that is what I would recommend. Performance wise, I think it's about the same as not having it on, but it just looks a little bit sharper. I run Filmic SMAA rather than just normal SMAA purely because it gets rid of the blurriness like you see on the van here maybe. Uh, the low quality anti-aliasing is an option that I've ran for a long time now but I've tested a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot on Warzone 2 and MW2 when it launched as well. Um, so I just, I just run out low, just keep it simple. My memory scale is a lot higher than this but in game it only shows this. I have it on I think 1.2 in the players folder. Uh, memory scale set to 90 in game apparently but it's not actually on that. If I were you, set it to your max and slowly bring it down if you have any issues. Um, probably don't go any lower than sort of 0.7 though. Uh, basically settings are as follows though. Texture resolution, I have on low. Anisotropic filter, I have on low. Nearby and distant level of detail are both on low. Clutter draw distance, I have on short. Particle quality low, particle quality level very low. Bullets impacts and sprays, uh, I have off, it's not important. Persistent damage layers, I have no idea what this actually is. Um, this is probably a new setting I haven't seen before. Um, I have it on. on. I don't really know. Explosion deflagrations weren't. Eh, okay. Probably turn this off, but it's not that important. I don't think I've, I don't think it changed FPS all that much. Uh, shaders I have set to low. Tessellation I have off. Terrain memory doesn't have an option set, but I'm pretty sure this is on minimum. Uh, Underman text streaming off. This can cause hitching, just so you know. Streaming quality on low. Volumetric quality on low. Deferred physics quality off. Water core sticks off. Shadow map resolution low. Doesn't really matter. I think you can go up to high and it won't have any issues. But I think just purely for the sake of not having any hitching when you know games doing a big load, I keep it on low. Uh, SSR, or sorry, the screen space shadows here I have off. Spot shadow quality I have on low. Spot cache is on medium. I think I've actually had this a lot higher before. If you've got the VRAM and you think you can get away with it, do it, try it, see what you think. Um, but I think it sort of helped me a little bit just with consistency in the benchmarks at least, which I stayed up till 4 or 5 a.m. for two or three weeks straight doing on MW2 release. Uh, particle lighting, I have on low. Ambient occlusion obviously is off. Screen space reflections, which is my SSR, I have off. Stack reflection, I have on low. Weather grid volumes, off. Uh, low latency is one thing for NVIDIA users. So I sometimes like to use on and boost, but on and boost did cause a lot of stuttering and hitching for me. I kept on on, and I think that's probably the best option just for improving your latency and having a good response time overall. Uh, obviously you've got depth of field off, all the motion blurs off, and fill grain is on zero. And that's pretty much it for the quality tab. So we'll move on over now to the view. If you are um, someone that likes playing Warzone and doesn't really play much MW2, I recommend just stick it all the way to 120. If you play MW2 a little bit though, maybe you want to bring it down to maybe 110, somewhere between that level, uh, 110 to 120, just so you don't feel that zoomed out when you play MW2. But if you're a movement kid, cracked out, whatever, 120, you know, standard. ADS I haven't affected. I've run the default weapon field view. I know some people like to use different stuff, but I mean, this is all pretty basic. And make sure you turn your camera movement stuff down to 50% because you don't want your camera shaking all over the place. And that is about it for the graphics tab settings. If there's any more in-game settings now, I'm going to go check, quickly check them and let you know, but otherwise we'll move on. One quick thing to mention, I don't know if it's still a thing anymore, but the parallax effects I have turned off, I think it's on by default. That used to cause a lot of the dev errors in game and we used to turn it off back in the day, maybe a month or two ago. If that's still a thing now, then keep it off. And so, yeah, that is everything that I have to offer for you right now. Like I said, just at the end there, if you have the players folder, then go in, try the settings on half, try the half cores, try the memory scale on 0.8 or 1.2, somewhere around that range. Uh, but yeah, get your cores on half, move them up one by one by one. 
if you don't know what the players folder is, don't worry about it, forget about it, does not matter. Just follow along with the Windows settings and follow along with the in-game settings I've had there. Hopefully they're useful to some of you. Let me know in the comments if it's been valuable at all and I will catch you in the next video.